In this video, we're gonna talk about Canon's new SPAD camera, which can see in near total darkness. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible, Blackmagic and Atomos. And now back to the video. All right, I'm here with Justin from Canon. We're gonna talk about the SPAD camera. So Justin, what do we what do we got going on here? So this is the MS500 camera that Canon released last year. So it contains a SPAD sensor, which is a first for Canon. It was the world's first multi-megapixel SPAD sensor specifically for imaging. SPAD stands for a single photon avalanche diode. So essentially it counts every incoming light particle and uses that to generate the image. So you get a really nice, clean, low noise image. This camera was designed specifically for long range uh, imaging, video surveillance. So think border patrol, harbor security, or even uh, long distance uh, wildlife photography, like documentaries to be able to okay. see animals in the dead of night without any additional lighting. How dark can this and the, can this camera see? Oh, think like, like probably quarter moonlight, it would do a really good job. Okay, well, what's the kid setup here and how kind of like, what are we looking at in this configuration? And oh, okay, so this, the camera itself is over here. So it has a one inch sensor and some uh, onboard magnifications to adapt to our B4 broadcast lenses. So this is a CJ45, so really long focal length to see miles out. And it's a, a box camera, there's no onboard recording. It has an SDI output, so you need a, a re external recorder for that. Yeah, I know you mentioned it has a lot of like technical applications, but have you seen have you seen uh, wildlife photography or applications or productions with that yet? So far? Uh, not quite yet. It's really, really new at this point, but we're bringing it here to NAB to hopefully drum up some interest in that sphere. Yeah, it's very interesting of like how it unlocks, what possibilities and stuff. Um, and so how does it achieve, I don't know if this gets too sciencey, but how does it achieve having the low noise versus like a traditional sensor? It's like Yeah, so because it's counting every incoming uh, light particle digitally, you gain a lot of noise capabilities compared to our traditional CMOS sensors. So if you have a CMOS sensor, it has to read out the, the accumulated charge in each pixel. So there is a analog to digital conversion that occurs there that introduces noise in a traditional CMOS sensor that you totally skip over when you're going to strictly uh, digital counting of photons. A little, little complicated, but it's pretty yeah, cool from a science standpoint. Yeah. Uh, are there other, or other like developing something like this? Does this can this lead to other types of sensors or changing the way that images are captured in other applications? Sure. So because this is so new, we're kind of targeting more so the uh, surveillance market with it. But we're we're seeing a lot of interest from like the science community and different kinds of applications. So. Yeah. Or I guess I meant, so I'm like, I meant this type of sensor versus CMOS. Is there developing something like this type of sensor? Does that possibly like lead to other advances developing sensors that can capture in low light or just other ways of how we capture images? Yeah, totally. I definitely think so. So, but like most of our engineering is done over in our headquarters in Japan. So we get, I can in USA, get the finished product. A lot of how the sausage is made is done over at our headquarters in Tokyo. Cool. Well, I'm very curious to see what applications this has and how people put it to use. All right, great. Thanks, Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And that is it for this video. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist. And for more videos like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.